for me, the Southwest is special for a lot of different reasons. I have several generations of my family who are, who are buried in this land throughout the Southwest. It's my spiritual home. When you have something like the Yergadi Aquifer, which is an absolute survival essential for the farming and for the tributaries and waterways around the Southwest, to start drilling through that, to do a reckless mining activity, like unconventional gas, whether it be tight gas, shale gas, it seems like one of the most irresponsible things you could do for the community, for the environment, and for the water. The thought that someone, a mining company, and maybe not even an Australian mining company, but a, a company can, could just walk in and take over my complete life and ruin my lifestyle. Actually, even standing here makes me feel sick, physically sick in the stomach. Here in Broome, 84% of the Yaru community, Yaru and Jugan people voted no to fracking but the native title process it doesn't allow you to say no. It's a shame that all this land has to be um, destroyed just to explore for gas. This is our traditional land. It doesn't matter what side of the political divide you stand on, the environmental side you stand on, this is not that kind of debate. The debate is whether we have responsible industries coming down to our communities to do good business in a sustainable way that's actually going to be a benefit for our communities. What we've seen from this gas industry is that their history is reckless, their human relations is shocking, the environmental de degradation that comes with industry is just appalling, and their whole spin on the fact that this, this is a transition energy to help bridge us towards renewables is a absolute, it's, it's a fallacy and it's, it's actually a straight up lie. This fracking procedure emits massive amounts of methane, massive amounts, not just through it, 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 the process of bringing it up, but actually the seepage that occurs and all the venting that they need to do, all the excess methane from the process that they need to get rid of, they just, they just burn it off. And you can see it over in Queensland, what they're doing. We got an industry that is, is trying to cloak itself in being a transitionary, a sustainable resource towards renewable. In actual fact, it's emitting a substance that is actually 80 times worse over 20 years. So if you can get your head around that, it's pretty diabolic when we're dealing with something like climate change. Across Australia, more than 37% of the nation's landmass is under license to coal and gas companies. The majority of the leases and applications in WA are for unconventional gas exploration and mining. At least nine exploration wells were fracked in WA between 2004 and late 2015. The situation here in WA is that you have an industry and a government who are hell-bent on pushing unconventional gas, onshore unconventional gas, across the entire state. We've got nearly 50 million hectares of licences and applications, and what most of those areas where they're looking for is shale and tight gas, unlike on the east coast where it's coal seam gas in WA. 
It's predominantly gas that's found in shale formations and gas that's found in tight sandstone rocks. You have regions from the southwest to the midwest to the Ningaloo coast to the Kimberley, all under threat from this industry. In the southwest, you have a number of companies looking to explore for gas in the region over some of our most iconic tourist regions, our fertile agricultural lands, and what is really a very closely settled region and completely inappropriate for that sort of industrialisation. You have even the areas, the peri-urban areas around Perth in the Swan Valley and to the north of Perth that have licences and that could potentially be fracked should the industry want to go ahead there. In the Midwest, what is really ground zero for the industry in Western Australia, where it is most advanced, you have two companies close to doing production of unconventional gas in that region and you have a great threat to the underground water resources because the entire farming industry in the region relies on underground water as do the townships. And then in the Kimberley you have these vast areas of iconic tourist landscapes, of Aboriginal lands, of internationally significant wetlands that could potentially have thousands of gas wells established across them with all kinds of risks to the, to the wildlife, to the communities, to those landscapes. I'm not a protester, I'm a Yaru traditional custodian, which means that I've inherited a role and responsibility through our tradition to look after and protect our country. Our country is at risk now and it's been threatened too in the past by fracking. Boru Energy uh, they came in and fracked in 2010 on our country without the consent of the traditional people. Buru Energy has got three wells on our country, uh, so it's Yellowroo 2, 3 and 4. They've got a footprint of their well and it's 150 metres wide and uh, long. They put a 10 foot fence right around that well so it denies people access through their own country. And um, I'll never, or my grandchildren, will never have access on that country. And that's only one well and there's a potential for, we say 15,000 and I can just imagine how the fence is going to go around that and how big it's going to be. I'll be denied access in my lifetime. My grandchildren and their children will be denied access on their traditional ground that in the federal court we were granted exclusive rights over this country. And what I understand exclusive rights is no one else in the world could make a decision what happens on this country only the Yaru people. I've been at this site now for almost two years. My country would be fracked now if I wasn't here. I'm prepared to stay here to seize this fracking operation. Our people voted against it. I'm adamant about taking that stance. I can see myself living out here for the rest of my life to protect my country and practice my tradition. Fracking is not for us. I'm concerned about the lack of information about what fracking can do, about the science that is not put on the table whenever there is a, a meeting with an Aboriginal group. I have been witness to techniques of information, withholding information, that people could use to make an informed decision about going ahead or not. One of the techniques that uh, the company Burra used was to put a jar of gua on the table, powdered gua, and, and tell the attending people in the audience this is what is used to make jelly beans. So when you tell the people that in this jar is some powder and have a look, I'm putting my finger in it and I'm eating it, I'm tasting it, and it's all good. 
and old people go, oh, jelly beans, oh, I know jelly beans. Then they're told that this is what is being put into the ground. They're not told that there are chemicals that are added to that to make the sludge that goes in the ground under pressure with sand and water and all of that and, and the amount of water that is to be taken from country, the amount of chemicals that's added to that concoction, the amount of sand that is put in. And when you actually break that down and tell our people for every one frac out of one wellhead, something like 240, 44 gallon drums of chemical is used, Olympic sized swimming pool of water, one dump truck of sand for that one frac then they understand. So if you can break the white fella science down to a level that anyone on the street can understand, suddenly this issue of fracking takes on a whole different light. Western Australia has large deposits of tight and shale gas. These are known as unconventional gas deposits. Unconventional gas differs from natural gas because it's more difficult to extract and can't be developed with conventional processes. The most common method of extracting tight and shale gas is through hydraulic fracturing or fracking. The fracking process involves injecting water, chemicals and sand at high pressure into a well to fracture the earth and release gas trapped in tiny pockets deep underground. Millions of litres of water and truckloads of chemicals are required for every frac. Many of the chemicals that are being used have not been assessed for use in this context. You know, for example, some of the chemicals are supposedly household products. We know that a lot of household products like bleaches and other um, chemicals that are used in a variety of purposes are not safe to be ingested. In Australia, people living in southern Queensland near the gas fields of Tara and Chinchilla have reported experiencing a range of health problems. Well, we have 11 children, but the little girl that's been here, born and bred here, yeah, she wakes up in the middle of the night screaming, bashing her head into the wall with headaches. The littlest boy who's six, he just walks around and he has, you can look at his school records, he has a, a, a day off a week. Yeah, the headaches are coming on worse and worse all the time. The other little fella, he, he gets really, the teenager one, he gets really bad headaches as well now, so... We first came here and there were, no one had headaches, but now, just recently, they're starting to have more and more of a time. Our biggest issue is the health of the two children, suffering rashes, ear ringing, nosebleeds, constant like lack of sleep, and for this, we have been at QGC for three years to move us. We've had enough, we've had enough a long time ago. It's to the point where you know your health is getting worse and worse. In the United States, people living in tight and shale gas fields have experienced similar ill health. What we see are women that lose their sense of smell, their sense of taste. They get neuropathy, where their fingers and toes lose the feeling and it slowly works up their limbs. You can have trouble with clear thoughts and forming sentences. Men have ringing in the ears, chronic fatigue. And then, seeing as how I know my story the best, that's about a third of the way through my hair falling out. Within a, it took about two weeks for it to fall out. And not just the hair on my head, my eyebrows, my eyelashes, my facial hair. Can't grow a mustache or no eyebrows. You walk around looking surprised your whole life. It's skin, too. And I was told I had dry skin. I had about 600 of these from head to toe, including on my eyes and in my mouth. It took me two years to come back from this. It's, you know... I'm not exactly a young, but I'm not old, and I work hard every day, but this about stopped me. And if it was just me, I might think it was something different, but all the people around me, I've seen this in Texas and in Pennsylvania, 
I've seen this everywhere that this happens. And I've even seen the bloody noses and the seizures and the stuff that my children went through happening to the kids in Chinchilla right now. This is what it's like. This is what I, how I farm now because I'm paranoid and I don't want that back again because you can taste this everywhere you go out there. We moved here from Pemberton about 14 years ago and the main attraction when we, uh, when we uh, come and looked at the farm was the magnificent water that it had on the property. It had two running creeks that were both permanent running creeks, so water is critically important to us. We decided to grow potatoes, invested a lot of money into it, probably well over a million dollars without any assistance from anyone, may I add, without any grants or whatever. We're really reliant on the water in the area. It's really uh, the soil and the water makes it such a good area to grow veggies. Virtually no salt at all in the water. It's like uh, it's as good as Perth's drinking water. It's probably the best food bowl in the state. And just why they've uh, allowed gas leases over the area is just bloody, uh, well, it's, it's just ridiculous, really. We can't, we can't believe it that they'd even suggest that. We're only 160, 70 k from Perth, right on Perth's doorstep. Most farmers in this area will do everything themselves without having to get any financial assistance from government. And yet we've got mining companies in here getting financial assistance themselves to come into the area. Everyone knows that fracking and extracting gas doesn't really work with agriculture, so it uh, just seems a no-brainer to me. Yeah, we have an organic beef operation, which relies on clean soil, clean air, clean water. So we stand to lose a lot if we had con contamination of any of those things, particularly the water. We, we would probably be uh, decertified if, if there's anything of that nature. But apart from that, just the fact of pollution would be a real concern. My family have been here, Cook family been here for generations. If my grandchildren farm, they'll be seventh generation. We're very, very concerned um, what the future will bring if these fracking companies come into our district and start carving us up. Our main concern is the water and the water quality. They say it's safe, they tell us a lot of things, but there is a risk and we feel that if there's any risk at all, it shouldn't be done. They shouldn't be even considering fracking in this area. We've been identified for a water for food area because of our water. It's at varying depths and if they frack they'll be going through it and there's, there is a huge aquifer, a lot of water under us which goes right down to Perth. So if they pollute our water here, the water for Perth will be polluted as well. In Western Australia, landholders have no right to say no to gas companies wanting to explore or drill for gas on private land. The law is on the side of the gas miners. I, for about 20, 25 years, have run a riding school and relied completely on that for my, for my living. I'm retired now and um, I basically rescue racehorses and re-educate them. I live here because of the peace, the quiet, the tranquility and the, and the nature, just I have nature all around me. I actually stand to lose basically my whole existence. All my effort has gone into this property and actually making a living from the property. And if, if, if this changes, if people can come and take this away from me, how, how is it fair? It's just distressing to even think that I don't have a right to have my own place. Thank you. 
And I can't imagine that anyone sitting in an office in Perth or Canberra can just say, yeah, who cares about all those people? Who cares about the effort they've put into building their lives, using their initiative, working, tw you know, 24 hours a day just to, to build something up, than to just have it taken away? I'd like to be able to make the choice. At this stage, it appears that we will have no choice. Across the nation, communities are fighting back against invasive gas mining. In growing numbers, they are locking their gates to the gas industry and declaring their districts off limits to exploration and mining through gas field free community declarations. We've just declared North Boyan up gas field free. Gas field free, North Boyan up! Yeah! 95% We've got more than 400 gas field free communities around Australia and they're growing all the time in Western Australia. And these are communities that have done a grassroots democracy process, they've visited every house in their neighbourhood and given everyone a chance to have a say on do you want your community gas field free. These communities then declare themselves gas field free. When these communities take this action, it's obvious that there is no social license for this. If a gas company comes in to a community that's done this, they are invading a gas field free community. While there's no legal power in that, it's a powerful political statement and it's a moral statement. But they, these communities believe they have the right to determine their future. There's much we can do to fight this invasive, unconventional gas industry. We can declare our communities gas field free after doing the survey. We can form action groups. We can spread the story about this powerful social movement. We can do this in Western Australia. We really can do this here.